welcome. I'm Jackie Stennett, a U.S. Army veteran and the Vice President of Academy Women. Thank you all for taking time to join us for today's event. Academy Women's Career Coaching Workshop, which is held as an annual event, will continue to extend its reach by bringing you a monthly webinar series. As with our annual career workshop, which will be held in 2024 on April 11th as a hybrid event with options to attend in person or virtually, the monthly webinar series will provide insights from subject matter experts and thought leaders who share their knowledge on a broad array of topics designed to support the professional and personal development of military leaders in every branch of military service and every duty status from across the United States and around the globe. For those who are in or considering a career transition, be sure to stay tuned until the end of today's webinar, where you will have the opportunity to connect directly with a member of Los Alamos National Laboratory's talent acquisition team for a Q&A group session. And throughout the month of December, you will also be able to learn more about Los Alamos National Laboratory in Academy Women's new Virtual Engagement Center powered by the generous support of Lidos. The Virtual Engagement Center is an always-on platform where members of the military community can gain access to important resources and connect through asynchronous text, audio, and video chats with top-tier military-friendly employers like Lidos and Los Alamos National Laboratory. Los Alamos National Laboratory first stood with Academy Women in support of our mission in 2021 and has stood with us every year since. And now we are pleased to welcome them as our presenting partner for today's webinar. Thank you, Los Alamos National Laboratory, for your continued commitment to military women and the military community. A special thanks goes out to Michelle Masanick, who is a military spouse and the veterans recruiter who works diligently behind the scenes at Los Alamos National Laboratory to ensure military members are supported as they transition into meaningful careers subsequent to their service. I did want to have an opportunity to talk to you. Uh, my husband is a retired submariner, and when he retired in 2004, he did not have this opportunity to uh, explore different careers. And so he defaulted to the company that built the components for his submarine. It wasn't until he realized, he assumed that the lab needed PhDs and scientists, and it never dawned on him that they needed technical workers, program managers, project managers, and so much more. So my husband and I moved here in 2018, and it has been an absolute game changer for us that um, we, we have loved every minute of being here. So I just wanted to take this opportunity to plant a, a seed with you. And a lot of you are probably thinking, Northern New Mexico, what the heck are you talking about? But part of my sales field is we're not the break and bad of Albuquerque. We're up at the foothills of the Rocky Mountains. Yeah, I don't know how many of you have seen the Oppenheimer movie that's been out, but our history, we exist because of World War II, and we are the creators. Oppenheimer did his work here. We were an army base, and uh, he came over and took it over to do his research and that is the genesis of, of uh, why we are what we are. This laboratory so this is a is... special place. Perfect. You can find scientists in almost every discipline. The nature of the technical questions that we have to answer as a laboratory almost always go beyond any one discipline. Los Alamos's role is to apply the principles of science for the betterment of mankind. The beauty of this laboratory is that we're able to attract some of the most talented people in all fields from all over the world who come here and make contributions to the central part of what we do as a laboratory, helping make the world safe. What's special about Los Alamos is this collection of highly talented, and highly passionate scientists is that passion is actually the heartbeat of what the laboratory is all about. It's not enough to be really good scientists. You have to understand the mission itself. 
when you think about the complex problems that we need to solve for the nation, these are not easy problems. We love the impossible problems here. Principally, the mission of this laboratory is to provide the capability to maintain a balance and a deterrent through nuclear weapons and through understanding the nuclear postures of others. The best war is the war you never fight. What nuclear deterrence is about is ensuring that anyone who might choose to challenge the United States will be met with an overwhelming response they simply can't endure. The lab is huge. It's extremely complex. It's the complexity that the lab has that allows us to solve problems that no one else can. We have accelerators. We have places where we can do explosive detonations. Environmental test chambers, crystal synthesis labs, scientific instruments, unlike those anywhere else in the world. We've had over the course of our history, some of the fastest computers in the world. All of that is being used all together every day. In fact, there is nowhere else that can bring the facilities to bear to understand the problems that we confront today. None of that is really effective without having the people in those facilities doing the science and technology. I think the people that are at this laboratory today are all essential to the accomplishment of the mission. No matter what they work on, everybody counts. People really are proud of being able to support the mission of the laboratory. There's no place better if you want to make a difference. Our children have not had to experience warfare on a global scale for over 70 years. It's a tribute to the work that the people of this laboratory do every day. This is just our leadership, an overview of our leadership. A lot of people think that because we are under uh, DOE, that we are a government entity. We're an FFRDC, Federally Funded Research and Development Center. So we report to an NSA, we report to the Secretary of Energy, but we are managed by a company called Triad, which is comprised of University of California, University of Texas, uh, A&M, and uh, Battelle. So the really neat thing about this is we have the opportunities for ongoing education as well, because two of our three pillars are universities. Let's go ahead to the next slide. Okay, on this next slide, you can see the world is obviously at a state of unrest, which is again why we exist with our nuclear deterrence and our science and our and our research to, uh, you know, further enhance national security. We'll go ahead to the next slide. This shows an overview of our campus. So we're located over 40 square miles further on in the presentation. We have a really cool overview of our whole area. We have uh, over 1,800 interns that come in and, and uh, continue their research at the lab. We have 13 nuclear facilities. Uh, over, I think we're actually up to 17,000 employees now. 2,700 PhDs. We need more veterans here. We need the leadership capabilities of the veterans and the can-do spirit to move things forward. And next slide. So these are just some of our some of our design elements with uh, the Navy and the Air Force. Um, and then we'll go ahead and go to the next slide. This one I find interesting. It's a whole overview of the DOE weapons complex. So you can see here we are in Los Alamos in Northern New Mexico. We're responsible for production and R&D testing. Sandia, uh, our sister lab down in Albuquerque is responsible for R&D testing. So each lab has components, and then it all gets assembled at Pentex. 
located in Amarillo, Texas. Next slide, please. This shows us the kind of experiments that we do for uh, non-destructive testing. We do modeling and simulation. We are continuously doing ongoing training. So this is some of the cool, cool stuff that happens at the lab that I haven't even seen yet. I don't know if you have, Becky. <laughs> Next slide. We're building a new supercomputer. Um, I think by the time phase one is completed with Crossroads, I think by the time they complete phase two, I'm sure it'll be the second fastest supercomputer in the world. But we are continuously keeping up with technology and we need the computers to uh, be able to do all the mathematical calculations that it's asked of. Now the following, the next slide, please. This shows you parts of the lab that might not even be on your radar. So not only are we about nuclear deterrence, but we're on the forefront of space exploration. So on the bottom right-hand side of the screen is the Mars rover. We built the nuclear batteries on the Mars rover, and one of our engineers here uh, built the camera that's being used on Mars rover, which I think is really Phenomenal. So not only are we going into space exploration, but we also um, uh, are the owners. We the Human Genome Project started here for HIV research, and now the HIV vaccine is in human eff efficacy trials. We participate in the flu modeling. We've been doing the COVID modeling. So we're, we are so much more than a nuclear deterrence agency. We really are doing science and research in every component. When you go through TSA and you have that big magnetic imaging red machine that you have to go put your arms up in the thing, that technology was designed here at the lab. So every day I am blown away by what I am learning. Next slide, please. This is just a quick slide to show you the diversity of our workforce. So <clears throat> professionals comprise 30% of the lab. Our postdoc researchers, researchers are 3% of the lab and so forth. So this is, um, we're like a small village all into itself up here in Northern New Mexico. Now the next slide, Susan, is my favorite slide. This really gives you a graphic image of where we are. Uh, this picture of the mesas gives you an overview, not only of the DOE complex, but the residential areas surrounding it. So as I speak to you from my office at home, I am gazing out at those very mountains uh, and enjoying the view tremendously. The work-life balance here is very extraordinary. Next slide. So that segues into this picture of what we have here at the community. The picture on top is our Friday night concerts at the park. We had uh, Billy Bob Thornton come and play this summer. It is a very collegial, collaborative family crowd. My grandkids are running amok. And I'm not worried about them. I know that they're safe in this environment. On the left-hand side, we have the Pajarito Environmental Education Center that has ongoing programs for children and adults to uh, hike and explore nature and get to understand um, the geological history of Los Alamos, uh, how to do animal, you know, do preservation of the wildlife. It's it's pretty phenomenal there. We just go there for picnic dinners. And on the right hand side is Los Alamos High School, which is ranked number two in New Mexico and is in the top four percent nationally. I know one of our new hires was absolutely blown away when he found out that his uh, daughter science teacher was a PhD. He's like, who ever heard of that? But again, the lab funds the school system here in Los Alamos County. So it is an extraordinarily good school system. 
The following slide, next slide, please, Susan, that shows the work-life balance. If you love to ski, if you love to hike, if you just love the great outdoors, we have it here in abundance. And being a transplant from the East Coast, I still, after four years here, cannot get enough of the countryside here and enjoying all the wide open spaces. We literally have hiking trails crisscrossing every neighborhood here. So uh, on those days when I'm frustrated by my husband, I grab the dog, I go out the front door, I go for a hike, and within 10 minutes, I'm walking along the edge of a canyon, just marveling that this is my new hometown. And then the last slide. <clears throat> I did want to talk to this about a little bit. This is our military skills translator that is powered by a team of veterans. Um, what you do is you put in your designator, your education, and your background, and the algorithm will line up our current job openings that mesh with your background. So if you don't know kind of how you fit into the lab or where you would fit in, this is a really phenomenal research tool to kind of understanding our job descriptions and going, oh, huh, is that what that's called? I'm kind of intrigued. So that's a, a, it's a wonderful algorithm. It's a wonderful tool and one that I'm very proud that we have. And now, Becky, I really want everybody to hear your story, how you got to the lab, how you continued your military career at the lab and uh, just kind of make this a conversational chit chat. Sure. Okay. Yeah, we sort of started that. Um, well, we were trying to figure out some of our technical challenges, but uh, <laughs> so I guess how I'd, I heard about Los Alamos or how I ended up here was uh, my dad moved us all here when I was 12 years old. And then I couldn't wait to leave the town and get out of here and never come back because it's, you know, a small town for high schoolers. It seems kind of boring and you kind of want to see more of what the world has to offer. But, you know, along with that comes a little bit of maturity and you figure out that where you came from probably isn't a bad place. And you hit on some of those with, you know, with the the excellent activities that are available to you and literally without you know I can get to a hiking trail in less than a minute from my front door and um, you know Los Alamos with the education the high school being ranked as it was it it gives your kids a great opportunity to be in a community with a lot of opportunities and have teachers that uh, for one reason or another are pretty they've got Either they worked at Los Alamos for a long time or they have spouses who did, and that sets your kids up pretty well for an education as they grow up and give them more opportunities in college or whatever it is that they choose to do. Um, so I went and I did active duty Air Force for six years, and then I came back here and got a job and continued on with my reservist time, as I said but was able to still work at Los Alamos. And Michelle, do you know, does Los Alamos still offer the paid military leave for 30 days a year? Oh, yes, absolutely. Thank you for bringing that up. We absolutely do, and we support reservists so that when they're doing reserve duty, it's not coming out of their vacation time. Right, and, and it's paid, too, so you sort of get paid two salaries while you're doing your two jobs, which is nice. Um, yeah, so Los Alamos, as far as opportunities for women compared to other laboratories that I've worked at or been at, it it provides us the opportunity to um, get a fair shake at things, I think, and they actually are very active in thinking about, you know, the representation of women and minorities, veterans and whatnot. So I've been at Los Alamos for over 20 years, so I think it's a great place to be and you know, if you, Los Alamos is sort of up on the Mesa, 7,500 feet. It's beautiful. We have a climate. Our ski hill, you can drive to the ski hill from your work in 10 minutes or less. And if you wanted to ski for half a day, you could do that and work the other half. Or 
and it's sort of a hidden gem. Not a whole lot of people know about it, so you don't have to stand in lines to get on the ski lift for more than probably five minutes. Sometimes you just ski right up. So I guess I'd I'd rather answer some questions unless there's something else you'd rather me hit on specifically, Michelle or Susan. Well, Becky, I'd be interested before questions, what do you do specifically in your group? Uh, you know, I think that your group is a pretty fascinating component. So many people look at the lab and they're looking kind of at the weapons complex and not the different areas that we have, such as high performance computing, um, science and research and all, and what, what is your group specifically? Sure, so I'm in a division, which is the Analytics, Intelligence, and Technology Division, and I'm the Deputy Division Leader. So we have about 350 employees who work for us. Um, and our division is more of a, so we don't help to build the pits, but we do a lot of non-proliferation, looking at proliferation risks. We have a group that's up in the, uh, we call it the SCIF, where people have SCI clearances and we look at, you know, our adversaries, our foreign adversaries and what their capabilities are or might be and how what can we do to inform ourselves on that or, you know, help our nation to, to defend against that. We have uh, another group that does a lot of data analytics, and Michelle, that goes back to where you were talking about COVID. Uh, you know, we have scientists who directly informed that as, as that was kicking off, and, um, you know, they met with CDC and governors of different states on a pretty regular basis. Um, we do critical infrastructure modeling, so, you know, our reactors or our power stations across the United States and sort of get, if something were to happen, trying to understand what we can do to mitigate or keep that from happening or respond to it should it happen. We do fire modeling, so, you know, a wildfire, for example. We look to see how people handle that and what we can do to, to mitigate it or deal with it should it happen. We have two groups um, that do a lot of hands-on application, working with different partners that we have, FBI, CIA, DOD. We work a lot with the DOD on a regular basis. We have two DOD officers who come out here um, twice a year, every year, they, and they stay with us and we work hand-in-hand -hand with them. But they do things like radio frequency design and analysis, mechanical design, um, electromagnetics, and, and those two groups are, it's, they're kind of fun because sometimes our customers come and they say, hey, we have this problem and we need to solve it, but we don't know what to do. And so our staff that work in those groups get to do everything from cradle to grave, and typically they come on short timelines. So it's, it's exciting and it, it's applicable to our mission, you know, which is one of the things that I like is Part of the reason I was in the military for so long was the people and, and our mission and what we did. Um, and a lot of stuff people don't ever know that we really do, and so we can continue that thread in my civilian job of really sort of caring about why we do what we do and bleeding the red, white, and blue. Um, we have you know, before Super Bowls, there's a team, or before presidential elections, a team of people go out to the places where these things are going to be happening, and they make sure that there's no dirty bombs or bad things that are getting set up, and we have a group who deals directly with the FBI and counterterrorism and weapons of mass destruction, proliferation, so we do that, which is exciting. Then we have a group that also does... Um, it's called our Advanced Research and Cyber System Group. So they do a lot of artificial intelligence and machine learning, uh, cryptography, sort of ensuring that uh, we have the tools and capabilities to keep the bad guys out or 
allow the good guys in. So uh, it's not wow. IT cyber, but it's different types of cyber. So I guess in a nutshell, that's our division. I'm part of the global security um, organization here at Los Alamos. And aside from A Division, we have a group that does a lot of space applications, which Mich Michelle talked about earlier. And it's more than just the batteries that go on Mars, but we work with the DOD every day there in that group. And then we have a group that's, uh, we call it NEN, which they focus on nonproliferation and actually going out to international countries and training those countries on uh, different technologies and techniques that they can utilize to keep the um, you know, radiological sources or materials safe and out of the hands of bad guys. Fascinating. I, I still have no idea. Two and a half years of working at the lab. My husband's been there four years. I've been there two and a half years and there's still so much I don't know. I want to come and work for your group, Becky. That sounds amazing. <laughs> it's a great place to be, for sure. And, <laughs> you know, we work with our support organizations too, right? And not all of our staff have technical degrees. Like we we go from PhDs in a technical area to a lot of skills. You know, we have welders and we have machinists and um we work with a lot of our LANL support organizations like human resources and student programs and um, budgeting, and, right? So, so the gamut and the types of degrees that you have to have to be able to work at Los Alamos truly is a very wide spectrum. And that touches up on a good point as well because we are proponents of ongoing education the perception is you have to be degreed to work here. Um, to be quite honest, it's easier to place you if you have a degree, but there are plenty of opportunities if you don't have a degree to come and work here and continue with your education. So in that vein, it's not uncommon to have people work here and get their uh, <clears throat> bachelor's, master's, and PhDs on us um, while they are working at the lab. So that kind of segues, are there any questions from anybody? As I, as I said, I'm sorry you can't see my face. I Technology is not my friend today, but I really wanted this to be kind of a chatty webinar where you could ask your questions as well. And, um, and we're here to answer them. Great. Well, we do have a question um, that has come in, and I just want to remind all of the viewers that you can ask questions through the Q&A feature as well as through the chat. And I can go ahead and ask the questions of our, our um, team and our presenters so that they can address them. So the first question, do you need a security clearance and or deep background check to work at Los Alamos National Lab? No, we will get that for you. So you you do not need to come with the security clearance in place. Uh, I'm an example. I'm a trailing spouse. I've been a trailing Navy spouse and uh, never had a clearance in my life. And I thought I was hot stuff the day I finally got my badge at the lab. Can I add to that? I will if, if you do already have a clearance in the military and we work with you prior to you departing the military, it makes it a lot quicker and easier to transfer that over while we get your so the DOD and the DOE get separate security clearances. It's the exact same process. But if we can pull your DOD clearance over here first, it helps us too. So if you do have one, keep that in mind. But like Michelle said, you do not have to have it. And if you are unfamiliar with DOE clearances, and Becky, please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, an L, a, D, a DOE L is equivalent to a secret clearance. A DOE Q is equivalent to a top secret clearance. All right, we have a question from Aaron. Do you offer assistance with relocation? Great question. Heck yes. 
Uh, our work, our relocation package is as comprehensive as a PCS move. So we will, and if you own a house currently, we will pay your realtor fees to uh, sell your house. We will pay your realtor fees and closing costs to buy a house up here in Los Alamos. You have two years as a new employee to do that. We, uh, it is the most comprehensive relocation package I have ever seen. We will write you a check for $5,000 just to travel cross country for the uh, inconvenience of having to drive cross country. We will put you up in a hotel room for 60 days while you go house hunting. It is an extremely, we will even, if you own a boat or an RV, we'll move that here as well. Though a boat might, might be, you might want to trade the boat in for, uh, for skis, but um, so we will, we will relocate extra cars, RVs, motorcycles, pack you up and bring you here. Sounds amazing. A, a, a kind of a follow-on question: Are there roles are on are all roles on site, or do you have any remote opportunities? So uh, Becky is probably more familiar with remote opportunities than I am. The politically correct answer for me to give you is due to national security and the nature of our work. Ninety-nine point nine percent of our roles are located on site. Uh, as my husband explains, you know, you can't bring plutonium home to work on plutonium. Uh, with that being said, however, as an example, I'm in HR, I am an admin, I am a teleworker, and there are, my counterparts are located all around the country doing telework. Some of our IT positions are telework. Becky, uh, based on what your group does, your division does, I'm assuming that most, if not all of your roles would be on site. Would that be correct? Yeah, all of our roles are on site. And most of, I would say 99.9% .9 of our staff have clearances of one kind or another, usually Q. Some have the higher level SCI, which if you work in a SCIF environment, that's that's what you'd need for that. We do provide, um, you know, sometimes if you don't have a job that requires secret or top secret work all the time, you can work from home sometimes. So we try to be flexible, but I guess the other thing with global security and where I work is it's similar to the military where you're a family. And so people understand that stuff happens sometimes and you, as long as you're talking and getting your work done and doing a good job. We're pretty flexible. So, so another question, Jill, you can speak probably very directly to this. Do, are there spouse opportunities for those who do take jobs with Los Alamos National Laboratory? Are there what opportunities? Spouse opportun opportunities for spousal empl employment. So oh. you come, can your spouse get a job? Yes, yes, we love, we love dual, we, yes, we love dual hires. Um, now, again, I can't guarantee that the spouse will find a job. It depends on the background and the capabilities that, that the spouse has, but uh, it, whole families are hired here. Just the lab is very, loves that. Now, my son-in-law works here. My husband works here. I work here. We all came here initially because our son was working here and told us what a great place it is. So definitely. Fantastic. Brooke has a question for the statistic. 70% of new hires came on since 2019. She's wondering, is that due to the lab's expansion or turnover? Can you talk to that a little bit? Uh, and Becky, uh, chime in and correct me if I'm wrong. We are in this huge hiring ramp up because we have been mandated to build 30 pits per year. So the weapons division is growing exponentially. 
And that's why our workforce is growing. When I first started working here uh, two and a half years ago, we were at 14,000. And our projected growth rate, rate is up to 20,000 employees. Yes, there is some attrition. Some people come here and they start working here and they realize it's too remote for them. Um, uh, you know, the job isn't exactly what they thought it would be or they take their clearance and move elsewhere. But the predominant amount of people come to work here and they think that it's going to be, you know, oh, I'll just work at the lab for five years and build a bullet point on my resume. And they fall in love with the area and wind up and 30 and 40 years later, they're still here working. So Brooke is concerned so about the perceived isolation of living in the Los Alamos community. Uh, and so she's wondering how do people working in Los Alamos mitigate this perceived risk of being somewhat isolated? So we are 20, I am 35 minutes away from Santa Fe, New Mexico, which if, if any of you are from the East Coast, I would equate uh, Santa Fe, it, New Mexico is to uh, the Southwest, what Annapolis, Maryland is to the East Coast. It's a charming, thriving, buff, bustling city with world-class restaurants and museums and cultural events that take place. So in my mind, I have the best of both worlds. And this is probably Becky didn't realize this until she moved away from home and then came back from the area. So I live in a sleepy, quiet little neighborhood of two stoplights. I'm in White Rock, which is which is uh, my my neighborhood exists because it was overflow housing <laughs> for the lab in Los Alamos. I have two stoplights here. The neighbors say hello to each other. My grandchildren live three miles away from me and they can safely ride their bikes here to my house without any of the, the parents or the grandparents freaking out. But when I need to get my shopping fix or go to TJ Maxx or Home Goods, get my hair done, go to Sam's Club, it's only 45 minutes away in Santa Fe, New Mexico. For my recruiting trips, I fly in and out of Albuquerque all the time, which is a big city, and that's where Sandia is located. It's only an hour and a half drive, uh, driving at 85 miles per hour through open country and beautiful blue skies. So uh, I was a very urban girl living in Annapolis and I don't miss it one bit here. And Amazon, and Amazon delivers all the time. The UPS man and I are on a first name basis. That's fantastic. All right, so can you speak a little bit to the hiring timeline? Jessica is wondering, um, she's available around April. When would you recommend starting the application process? Now, now. Yeah. We, we are, <laughs> do you agree with that, Becky? We are. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> Sometimes our job openings are open for six months. And our hiring managers are so busy with their jobs that they might not even begin to review resumes until the end of that six month period. So the, the hiring process can be a bit cum cumbersome because we are bureaucratic. So, and I always advise adding to that, don't put all of your eggs in one basket when it comes to looking at jobs. I think it's important that you apply to any and every job that resonates with you and makes your heart sing. Can I say something about the LANL job process, the application process? Please. Please. Yeah, so not all jobs at Los Alamos require you to do a cover letter, but if they do say in the application uh, that they want you to do a cover letter, it's best to do a cover letter that answers each of the required job uh, skills that they say they want. So, you know, if it says they want you to be able to type, say, I can type and sort of 
a sentence of how I can prove that. Just because it helps the hiring managers and human resources when they do the first cut of all the applicants to say that you truly have the skills that they're looking for. Fantastic. And that is absolutely, thank you for uh, bringing that up, Becky. It's almost like a test, y'all. If, if you look at our job postings, read all the way through the job postings. There'll be a section towards the bottom of the description that says note to applicants. And it will either say things like, uh, please include a detailed resume or a detailed cover letter. Um, if a job requisition asks for a cover letter and you don't submit one, you're disqualified because you kind of failed the first step, which was attention to detail. Also understand as you begin this process, and this is where I can be your advisor and help, um, it's best for these jobs, one resume does not fit all. So if there is a job that does not ask for a cover letter, but ask for a detailed resume, make sure that your resume is hitting all the marks that's being asked of you in the, in the required minimum and desired requirements. That's really helpful. So Sarah's wondering, is there a veteran's preference option in the hiring or selection process? No, because we are not DOUGGOV, we are an FFRDC, we do not give veterans preference. We can accommodate disabilities here at the lab, but, but veterans preference does not give you a leg up in the application process. So what you have in lieu of veterans process, uh, preference, you have me, who's a bulldog and I will go to bat for you with the hiring manager. Becky knows this. I send her emails all the time going, would you consider this applicant? What do you think is so-and-so a good fit? And she's given me a lot of great guidance and advice as well. That's really helpful. So Aaron has a question. Are there education incentives or competitive salaries? Um, evidently, this, a little bit of research was done but um, wasn't super specific uh, on the research site. So if you could speak to some of the education and incentives or salary matching or, or salary determination. Becky, do you have any insight into yeah. that? Sure. Uh, so absolutely, we can pay for Schooling, there's lots of opportunities, different ways for that to happen, some ways that aren't even posted on the website, uh, you know, especially if you're getting an education that will help for your job here at Los Alamos and make you a, a stronger employee, there, no question about that. Um, okay. You know, the degrees that you do have will impact where we can hire you in at. So answering education opportunities and how that gets funded is, is more of a case-on-case -case basis, but we can definitely do that at Los Alamos. And, and speaking to the question, Susan, specifically uh, uh, to the person that wrote the question, are they thinking in terms of um, PhD research job, internship jobs, or just wondering overall if having additional degrees would uh, provide them with higher compensation when accepting a job here. And further clarification would be really helpful. Okay, Erin, if you could put that in the Q&A or in the chat, um, I can read that out. Um, so in the meantime, I'm wondering, Another question from John, are employees eligible for public service loan forgiveness? No, I don't think so. Becky? No, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, I see, Erin, that you're looking to advance your degree further. Yeah, absolutely. Los Alamos can do that and it would just depend on what you wanted it for and why. 
Okay, so Brooke has uh, a couple questions. One is she's wondering if everybody tends to live in Los Alamos or do they commute from Santa Fe or other communities? And then another kind of follow on question beyond the lifestyle one is do you, are there any flex schedules available? Maybe four days, work week, 10 hour days. Is that something that is an option? Yes, yes, and yes. I'll, um, I'll address Becky. Do you offer, a, uh, does your group work on 410s, 9 8, um, hybrids? Can some of your team members work at the Pacheco building? Can you speak to that? Sure. Uh, so most of our staff work 980s, which is you work nine hour days and you get every other Friday off. Um, but, you know, as I said before, every we have group leaders who support their own staff and people stay in constant communication. So understanding, you know, if you needed to not work on a certain day and flex those hours, you know, we, we pretty much approve that given the circumstances. Um, you know, shift work for tens tends to happen mostly in the plutonium pit facility. Um, and they do, that's what they do. They work, they work shift hours, they work four tens, um, and that's just a different work environment. Uh, and we do have staff who are in a hybrid where some, you know, they're on site three days a week and at home two days a week and whatnot. It, it completely depends on where you work at Los Alamos. You know, A division is, we're scientific R&D and hands-on and, a lot of it's classified work, and so you you really have to be here to to do it. It just depends on where you work at at Los Alamos. So looking from other divisions, um, I work nine eight nine eighty, so I have every other Friday off. So you'll typically find me in the winter time uh, camping every other weekend at Taos. We have a trailer that we use as our little ski chalet, and I will be on the ski slopes every other weekend there. Um, my husband works the 410 schedule, so every weekend is a long weekend for him. And this kind of hybrid, actually not most of our employees live in Los Alamos County because of um, the volcanic rock that we're built on and we're surrounded by tribal lands. Housing is really tight here, and to be totally brutally honest, that's the one major elephant in the in the room. If you pull up your phones and you look at Realtor.com, and you look at the inventory of housing in Los Alamos County, your first reaction is going to be, holy smokes, that's a lot of money for a house that's not HGTV perfect, and your second reaction is, holy smokes, there's only two houses for sale and it's going to be pending in five minutes. With that in mind, a great deal of our employees live um, in Santa Fe. As the spouse, we're at my choice. I would have wanted to live in Santa Fe, but my husband had commuted from Annapolis to Washington, D.C., uh, every single day for 14 years. So that turned out to be a three hour commute a day for 14 years. And the one big ask he made of me was, I wanna be able to ride my bike to work. Um, and for those of you that have children, if you reside, if you are a lab employee and you are residing outside of Los Alamos County, so you're residing in Santa Fe or you're residing on the northern side of Albuquerque, you know, so you have a 45 minute commute into work. You can enter your children into a lottery to attend the Los Alamos County schools. And once one child is in the Los Alamos County school system, all children are in automatically. Right, so and Los Alamos also, we have shuttles that will drive you from Albuquerque and or Santa Fe or buses, so you yeah. don't even have to drive yourself if you don't want to. And with that in mind, we have built a facility in Santa Fe, it's the building I referred to a moment ago called the Pacheco Building, 
and some organizations, some divisions, and again, it's up to the discretion of management, but will allow you to go, you can do your work at the Pacheco building rather than commute all the way up to the lab. That's obviously not going to be um, an option most likely with Becky's group because of the nature of their work, but the lab is very sensitive to trying to meet the needs of, of uh, current and future employees. Right. All right. I know we are going to go a little bit long, partly because we had some technical difficulties at the beginning. I did post a poll and uh, would welcome your feedback. The There is another question that's come in, and that is around those who have MBAs. Are there opportunities for people who have MBAs? Absolutely, yes, of course. We need people. A, it shows good business acumen. Uh, we need, we have a huge financial services division that I'm sure Becky is very aware of that's making sure that everybody's not overspending <laughs> and is holding accountable for their deliverables. So, yes, and that's again, and I really thank you for that question because you don't need a scientific background to work here. We, we do need MBAs and MBAs can be really awesome program managers. Fantastic. Um, is there any advice you would give to military members who um, are coming for interviews? Are there any do not do's or must do's in the interview process? I'm going to defer to you, Becky, because you are a hiring manager. Um, uh, I guess I'll just start with the obvious, right? If you're coming for an interview, you should. it's better to be overdressed than underdressed and uh, bring copies of your resume and your cover letter to show that you're prepared and uh, just answer the questions and be yourselves, right? I mean, you want to make sure you're going to be happy where you're coming to. So meeting the people, the people who will be interviewing you would be people that you would be working with. And um, yeah, but I guess that's the best I could say. So uh, adding to that, because, uh, you know, being a military spouse, I hear about, you know, I remember my husband um, at the Naval Academy always giving the gouge, right? The gouge for this class or the gouge for the next thing. What I would advise any veteran coming in for an interview at the lab is uh, really understand the job description that you're interviewing for and be prepared. The managers will speak very specifically to skill sets as it fits to that job description. I would also advise you, you could either lean in on me and I could see if I could find any veterans working in that particular division that would be willing to give some insight into the roles or how the division operates. Our lanl.gov website is extremely comprehensive and very thorough do some research into the lab and the division and the work that it does so that you're fully prepared. And the last bit of advice is my mom advice, really utilize LinkedIn. Go, go look at your LinkedIn contacts and type in Los Alamos National Lab and if see if by any chance you know somebody who knows somebody who works at the lab that might give you some gouge as well. That's super helpful. All right. Uh, another question from Stephen. What is the interest in older individuals who are not that far from retirement? I will be totally on. You can't see my face, but I am 61 years old, and I was hired at the lab as a 58-year-old woman to run the veteran recruiting pro program. I'm going to be blunt honest about it. I love that the lab uh, uh, hires the right people for the job. They're not looking for necessarily young people. They're looking for insight and experience. And I am forever grateful that they took a, a leap of faith on me despite my silver hair. 
Well, I think it's it's been a great fit. All right. Well, if there are no other questions, I am going to thank both of you for joining and thank you also for your patience to all folks, those viewing as well as uh, <laughs> our team presenting. But I think it's uh, it's always a new day with technology. So so thank you all <laughs> for your patience. <laughs> yes, um, my my sincere my sincere apologies. I was in app and I'm able to uh, to chime in, but I am delighted for this opportunity. I thank all of you for hanging in with us, and I'm just uh, really excited to talk to you about further opportunities if you're interested. And we did have your contact information on the screen for most of the question and answer periods. So. If uh, anybody still did not get that information, please contact us directly and we're happy to share that. So thank you for being so accessible, Michelle and Becky for being so honest and authentic about you know really what it is to work at Los Alamos National Laboratory. It sounds like an amazing opportunity. So I'm, uh, I'm great for Becky's time too as well. Thank you, Becky. Sure, absolutely. Hopefully someone will reach out and We'll make this happen. <laughs> Fantastic. So we are going to post more information about Los Alamos National Laboratory on our virtual engagement center for the month of December. So please go ahead and join in there and you can ask questions and we can follow up with the person who would be appropriate to answer that question um, through this virtual engagement center. So please go ahead and and find more information there or post your question there because it is an amazing resource brought to us by Lidas. And our next webinar will be 25 January, 2024. We'll be speaking with Deloitte about opportunities in the consulting world and uh, potentially exploring a career um, in a slightly different angle than Los Alamos National Laboratory, but um, interesting nonetheless. So, uh, Beyond our January webinar, we have our career coaching workshop, which is going to be held on 11 April, followed by our annual Officer Women Leadership Symposium. And both of those events are in Arlington, Virginia. We will offer virtual options. Uh, so it is, the, both of those events are hybrid events. And for the 11 April event, you will have an opportunity to connect with different companies and organizations such as Los Alamos National Laboratory, They've been exhibitors with us for the past couple of years. So you'll be able to meet people who are working there, talk to them about um, their experience and learn a little bit more, ask more specific questions. And, and then also learn about potentially um, how to position yourself to be successful in that employment process. And then again, the Office for Women Leadership Symposium is an amazing event where we focus on leadership discussions and um, just insights around uh, a community of professional development. On that note, I'd like to say thank you to all, and we look forward to seeing you again at a future event and uh, wish you all well and safety through the holidays. So thank you, thank you, and we'll see you all again soon.